the more you are attending to that, that subtle level of your being, the more you feel staleness. And then when you exhale out the mouth, it feels like you're like getting rid of off gassing this sort of stale chi. But then the nasal breathing in as best you can strengthens the muscles of respiration, awakens the sinuses, triggers little chemical production through the sinus cavities. And then you can go out the mouth as a cleansing, uh, cleaning out quality. So just a little bit of time spent here, eyes closed, head slightly bowed, but then remembering that visual that I talked about just at the beginning of your pelvis, your hips, your sits bones, allowed to really root down through the earth, down through your chair, down through the earth. And then feeling that bit of buoyancy that responds or rebounds up through the central line when you allow that correct rooting. Releasing shoulders and chest and back tension, neck tension, jaw tension. And again, this closing of the eyes, so potent. Just notice what happens when you close your eyes, how the light of your perception doesn't go away, but rather it turns around and it shines in. So becoming very effective at shining that perceptive light in and through your being. We'll be here just about one minute, breathing thorough, but leisurely. Softening where you are unconscious or subconsciously stuck. Feeling soft, spacious, and at ease. Last 30 seconds or so, four part breathing, which means you inhale at the top of your inhale, hold the breath in there for a moment, just satiate and saturate your system. Exhale when you're ready to, all the way empty. And then fast, be without breath for a moment. Don't breathe in, be empty. Then when it's time, inhale again. And then feast. You hold that breath and you just nourish and draw in and absorb. Then you release the waste with the exhale. And when you hold the empty space, just notice it's a little uncomfortable, but it in fact is very good for us to be deprived there for a bit, to do without. And then inhaling when it's time. Let's do that about four or five more times, that four part breath. Keep this attention to your breath. Slide your hands onto your knees. And we're just going to do two of these spinal movements. Get the most out of each one. 
rounding, <clears throat> sliding those hands forward, dropping the head, opening the back, just holding there for a bit, wiggling out anywhere you feel stuck and tense. And then back to neutral. Through neutral, pull elbows back, shoulder blades back, lift chest, lift chin a bit. Just a comfortable arching, again, holding there, maybe a turn a little this way or that way. Wiggle out where you're stuck. And then again, slide, hands forward, rounding. All 24 vertebra. And one more time. Arching. Uh, so now we've cleared some of the cobwebs in the body by moving. And we settle back to neutral. And that neutral might have a different quality now, a little more spacious. Now let's do that with the rotation. Left hand to right knee, right hand to right buttock. And we're just going to do one twist to each side. So just rotate a bit. Just think of this like you're wringing out a rag. Just giving it a light little ring. And then rotate smoothly back to center. And then we go the other way. Ring it out. And we're back to center. Feel that neutral, hang the arms, two to each side, let the head fall gently, the torso fall gently, the right arm go a little lower towards the ground, left elbow can float, maybe the wrist can float, maybe you reach if it feels good. Oh, it's always one of my absolute favorites. And one of the reasons this movement's so important is we rarely do this in any other context, right? Again, it's not like when I go to get my coffee cup, I walk up to my shelf and then lean sideways and do this little, you know, hooking motion to, to get it, right? And so that's why often this can be where a lot of the rust in the body is, con is congesting because we just don't make this shape often enough. So that's the importance of these practices. Let's do that again. Leaning. Remember, not with force. There's sort of a drooping quality, a letting go into movement quality. That is the hallmark of the Chinese Taoist Tai Chi Qi Gong viewpoint of what, what a healthy body that is trying to heal and is trying to age well and retain its suppleness, this ability to droop and soften into movement, into shapes. All right, we're back to center. Staying in the center, head and neck movements. Turn the head to look right. Back to center, turn the head to look left. Right. And left. Now, when you turn to look right, look slightly down behind you, chin going down a little bit, look slightly up in front of you, and then slightly down behind to the other side, up in front, down behind, maybe a little higher up in front, down behind. Notice the skull going on a sort of interesting semicircle. One more. Now the exact opposite of that, where you look down a little bit in front and a little up behind. Down a little bit in front, a little up behind. Maybe a little more down, maybe a little more up, but just don't crank your neck, don't pinch your neck, but just move it through these little semicircles so that you're carving space, you're cleaning out congestion. And then return to that first one where it's just right across. Turn and turn. Turn and turn. So now we're just level. 
final time, looking to that second direction, and then we return to center. Now, the head, uh, take your left ear, I'm sorry, right ear towards right shoulder, so the head falls a little that way. Then the head falls gently back, the chin lift, circle the head around so the left ear is towards left shoulder, and then let the chin fall in front. Do that again. So see if you can trace that full circle. It can be very small, and then it can get a little larger. And we'll do about five more. So in these five circles, just get a little larger with each round so that you're at whatever your maximum circle is. Don't hurt the body. Try to limit the movement of your torso, right? So we're not leaning the shoulders and shoulders and shoulders and shoulders, but rather those are stable. And it's really just the head making that circle. On this last time around, have it be your final round. Let your head hang in front. And just hang there for a moment. Then like your crown is being pulled up to the ceiling, let the head float up. And let's go the other way. Left ear to left shoulder, a little bit back, around to the right, and a little bit forward. And just continue that circle. You might hear little gentle crunchies and, and, and little sounds or little squeegee sounds in there because the tissue is being loosened and lengthened and uh, collagen that can become tight like connective tissue is being challenged to soften and break open and, and become more supple. It's a good thing. And we'll take it around one more time. Let that be your max and you'll hang the head in front again. And let it just hang. And the head rises. And we do sink chi to the belly as a little brief closing. Hands up and over. Settle, 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 settle. Hands hover in front of the belly about three, four inches. It's called middle embracing. This helps us remember the chi we just let out to play, send it back to its home. And then we're gonna let it come out and play somewhere else. Let the arms come down alongside you. Right shoulder blade shrug. And release down. Left shoulder blade shrug. And release down. Now with both. Shrug, release down. Shrug, release down. One more. Notice how when the shoulder blades move, the arms go along for the ride. So you don't have to do anything with the arms. Now bring your legs close together. Shoulder blades spread apart on your back. Your arms naturally internally rotate, which means the thumbs turn in and point to the back of the room. Then back to neutral, arms and shoulder blades are neutral. Then crack a walnut behind you, turn your palms out. And then relax to neutral. Sink the chest softly back, almost like it's being gently pressed back. Shoulder blades spread apart, arms turn internally. And notice naturally the head wants to bow forward a bit. Return to neutral, everything's in the middle, crown is buoyant. Then crack the walnut behind you. The chest naturally wants to lift, and you create almost a little back bend. Arms turn outward and reverse. Now bring your legs very close together, right shoulder only. Forward, just like we did. Now elevate, shrug, bring it back up over the top, and then slide it down. Then we go forward and up. Back and down, forward and up, back and down. Let's do that one more time, forward and up, back and down. Now switch directions. The shoulder blade goes back, up, forward, down. So back and up, the shoulder blade is moving. That's why the arm is moving, like a tail. Back and up, forward and down. Last one, switching arms, forward and up, back and down, back and down. Good. 
switch directions, back and up, forward and down, back and up, forward and down, rolling that shoulder blade. Good. Now, both at the same time, we lean a little forward, round a little forward. Now, when you shrug the shoulder blades up, let the elbows come up, but the wrists stay soft. Then the shoulder blades go back, the elbows go back, the arms follow, and then we just slide those shoulder blades down. Neutral. Again, roll. Feel how this is just polishing out the corners. Polishing out the corners. One more. Other way. Back up over and slide down in front. Back, shoulder blades pinching together. Then they shrug and roll. And you notice you're letting your torso lean and lean. So you're getting this fluid quality to the body. And neutral. And then finally, right shoulder followed by left shoulder blade. Right shoulder blade, left shoulder blade. Circle, circle. Circle, circle. Switch directions. Forward. Shoulder blades, shoulder blades, shoulder blades. So many muscles attached to the shoulder blade that run up to the neck, down into the thoracic spine, onto the arm bone. So that's why we spend this time to really get those loose. All right. Now, from here, step your legs wider than hip distance. So you have a nice uh, wide stance. Take your left hand onto your right knee, lean over, and now you're circling. Soft circles, larger circles. Larger still, circle. Now stay leaned over and down towards the ground if that's appropriate, or maybe sit upright and draw the circle. Most important, the arm does come quite a bit in front, but when I go back, I don't force it past here. It maybe goes a little bit behind the line of the body, but there's no cranking, so it just keeps that soft circle quality. Circle, circle, all right and then let it hang. Now we go the other circle. For me, it's an inward circle now. Inward. And again, you might sit upright. Same idea, circle. So the arm doesn't go that far behind, but it does go quite a bit in front. Front. A little behind, but a lot in front. It's just how the body's built. One more. Other side, circle, larger, perhaps larger still, and sitting up. It goes quite a bit in front, not so much behind. Quite a bit in front, not so much behind. Soft, and switch, circle. This helps us get the quality we're looking for, the softness. And then you carry that softness as you come upright. You just keep moving through the path. Quite a bit in front, not so much behind. And done. Fold at the elbows. Gently compress the elbow just to feel the release of the elbow. Now keep that released soft, open elbow quality, and let your arms hang down again. And notice your elbows don't lock, nor do you bend them, but they have a slight bend like a, like a hose that's full of water. And now just raise your hands up in front, totally relaxed. Notice how close the hands are to the body. And notice the elbows are neither flared way out nor pulled way back. They're just right in this happy zone. And then release. Wrists float up. The fingertips are still dangling down like they're full of liquid. Soft. And then down. Now, up. Out. Notice that my wrists are still folded as I go out. And then on the way down, the elbows sink, the wrists follow, then the fingertips follow. 
down. Raise up close to the body. Express out. The wrists stay folded. Notice my wrists are still folded like this the whole way out. Then, as I come down, they change that position. Up, out, and now release. Let them swing and swing and swing until they come to stillness. Up, out, release. Swing, swing, swing until they come to stillness. One more. Great. Softly bend elbows, turn palms down, up. Uh, and this is forearm, pronation, supination. Then turn palms up, wrists and hands slightly in and out. Then wrists in and fold. Find this position. Notice how much the wrist is folding. The hand isn't even folding. It's really the wrist. And then through, 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 through. Now, as you go out, arms straighten as you turn your palms up and bring them in. Fold at the elbows, so now you're compressed in with the arms, and then express out. Feel those spirals. Spiral. Spiral. Shoom. 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 And pause. Palms up. Spin them so the palms turn out. Drop and point the fingertips towards you, and then offer. Spin. Circle. Circle, and then once you get that circling, then bring it in, out, in, out. Leaning back as you come in, forward as you're out. Shoom, shoom. The wheels, spinning these wheels, these spirals of the body, and yeah, let them hang, let them swing until they come to stillness. Hands come up right in front of the face, spin the palms to face up. Lift chest, lift chin, lift arms, pull elbows down and slightly back. This is open. Then the hands float up, claw like you're gonna shred flesh and then into a soft fist, wrap, and then pull elbows towards the belly, bow the head, forehead towards your knuckles. Inhaling as you open. So this little spin of the arms, palms up, full breath. Open, and then up and over, wrap, round, squeeze, and pull. Once more, inhale. Open, oh yeah, and, and, and we're back to neutral. Arms come down alongside, scoot to the back of your chair. Tai Chi fist like a boxer, chamber, one leg, set it down, chamber, remember it's not only the thigh lifting, but the heel pulling into the buttock, that's a, that's a coiled spring, set it down, coil up the other leg, set it down, coil, down, now, coil, express, through the heel, coil, and down, so this is your martial art push kick, it's also just the main function of the leg, this push and reverse. Push and reverse. Now push and hold. Point flex, point flex with the foot. Then evert, invert, a little in, out, in, out. Then inward circles. Outward circles. Recoil, down, other leg, hold, point, flex, point. In, out, in, out. Inward circles. Outward circles. And recoil down. Scoot to the edge of your chair. Swivel steps. Lift the left ball of foot, turn externally. 
knee and toes. Lift heel, internal, external, internal, and finally, full range. Walk it in, internal, external, all the way in. Neutral, again, external, internal, external, internal, hold, internal, external, in, and pause. Now we go out to hold. Hold, hands come along those inner knees, press. And then inner thigh, rub with the left hand along that inner left thigh out to the knee joint. Get any little sore spots there, make sure it's through. And then walk it in, internal, external, internal, neutral. Other side, three times, out. Really feel like you can move this from the hip, internal, external, internal, neutral. Two more. Notice how the pelvis and torso aren't moving at all. They're just staying as is, and I'm isolating the control of this leg. That's very important for many reasons, many, many reasons. Finally, hold, slide, press. And rub inner thigh. Out to the knee, get any sore spots. And bring it in. All right, now from the middle, knees point in till they're almost touching, toes point in, pigeon toed. This is internally rotated, external, internal, external, and then walk it in. In, X, in. Again, external, internal, external, internal, external, internal. Notice pelvis and spine, nothing is happening. I'm discerning this joint and the tissue, right? So everything else is just still while these legs are getting liberated and we're back to neutral. Hands on your thighs, fold as if bowing. Now we're discerning the legs are not moving, nor is the spine moving. The spine is being drawn through space because of the pelvis moving at the hip joints, known as hip hinging. Now add to it, please watch me do this one and then you'll join. As I hinge, I slide the hands out so the palm of the hand is on the knee and spin the arms around so that you're internally rotating pretty strongly the arms. And then reverse that, sit back up. Let's do that twice more. Folding, hands to the knee joint, kneecap area just above and spin around so you get that ringing out of all that back tissue. And then we're back up. So we're untying these knots. Again, fold, spin. And we're up. Now, shaking loose heavenly pillar, lift chest, lift chin, in a slight back bend, bow, and then slide the hands down, round the back. Now stay rounded as you drag yourself back up. Arching, oh, exhaling on the way down, if, it, if uh, that, that rhythm makes sense to you. Inhaling on the way up. Experience all 24 vertebra. Now, most important on the way up, I know many of you are trying to look at the screen when you come up, but don't look at the screen. Keep your head down. Keep your chin down until the very end when you're all the way up, then you can let your head come up. Keep your head up the whole way and then release. And same idea, but keep your head down so your chin is towards your chest, you're looking in until you get all the way up. One more time, chin stays up until you get all the way down. 
and then finally all the way up neutral sink chi to the belly so this is an adventure i mean again it's an adventure for your chi for your life force for your mind to be going to each of these places in the body and experiencing the playground that is the hips the playground that is the pelvis and spine playground that is the shoulder blades and we just return everything back to its home and then we come out for another adventure hands on your legs now step your feet pretty wide feet parallel pointing straight ahead so we're not turned out we're parallel hands on your legs this little sort of internally rotated fingers pointing in elbows flared out bow forward and just see how forward you want to go with the hips and the rib cage and the spine and the head and then come back up so what this does is it if you bow in there go ahead and again and i'll just describe it you bow forward between your legs and the back muscles and shoulder muscles, they sort of like, like sponges squish, especially if you really have a nice strong arm position. Then you bow in there and you create this little, oh, this little squeegee quality to the back muscles that is often where so much of our tension is held. Now on this last one here, watch me please. We go in, we stay in, and then this arm, Elbow drops and we internally rotate and we just turn, gently twist. Oh. And then switch and twist. And so go ahead and join me. Come on into position, get sturdy, and then just a soft ringing out to the right oh, and ringing out to the left. Just do two to each side. Oh. Oh, the barnacles loosening. And then we're back to the middle. Come all the way back, leaning back. Now the dragon stirring the sea. Bowing yourself towards your right knee. Swing through underneath and over to the left. And then leaning back as you circle. So the pelvis is moving around the thigh bones. The spine is along for the ride. The head is along for the ride. This is helping us really feel our center. It's when we really don't have our center that we don't feel sturdy and steady. Other direction, bowing, right? Turning the chest towards the knee and then sweeping and over. Sweep around and over. Sweep. neutral legs come back to neutral arms hang by your side float the arms turn the palms up and if it's reasonable for you go the rest of the way if this hurts just let the arms hang breathe and observe but then the next bit is reach just a smidge higher from that shoulder blade and then soften and reach and soften reach we're just getting that last little bit of stagnation from the neck, shoulders, upper spine, shoulder blades. Oh, the body is a sponge that has stagnant, mildewy water in it, and we're squeezing it out. Now, on this last one, do both. 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 Get that extra, extra, extra. Oh, and releasing down. Side last one we'll do before standing, reach forward, then keep reaching forward and up. And then once you start reaching up, now let your heart lift, your chin lift, and you create a back bend, an arching back bend. This is like anti depression, right? When we're feeling down in the world, you just gotta, oh, I gotta just clear it all out, lift, express, rainbow the spine. And then relax. Coming down in front. Sink chi to the belly. One more time. This is just letting it all again return home from the adventure of that movement. And remember it's home. Two and a half inches deep 
in the gut, in the belly. That's where they say everything is stored. And Western science is figuring this to actually be true. The gut brain, right? Arms come down by your side. Bring your feet slightly behind your knees, folding at the hip. So this is where that hip hinging comes in. Head goes past your toes. Push to rise. Find a moment of, ah, I'm not working to stay standing. I'm not holding, but ease. Then stick the tushy out, folding at the hips, sink and notice the knees bend because you're sending the butt down and the knees are happy to do that. If we do it wrong, the knees are not so happy to do it. We impinge the knee. So fold at the hips, the head beyond the toes, and then push through the earth to rise. Find ease. Control the descent. Fold. Stick your booty behind you, your head and shoulders in front, and then sink. And reverse. One more. Now, three times, sink just above the chair or close to it. Hover. And then rise. Two more. And rise. One more. Booty back. Sink. And rise. Now, my chair's out of the way. You keep yours where it is for safety. Now we're standing. Lock your knees. Right? Lock your knees. And feel how that sort of feels sturdy. But then unlock your knees and feel how that feels in a way less sturdy, but more springy, more springy. Like you could gently bounce a little bit, right? Let's do that one more time. Lock, so you feel what that's like. Many of us, that's what we rely upon when we're standing. We lock out and we don't train the muscles that are needed. So then unlock. We're not bending the knees, but we're unlocking them. And then just feel that sort of springy quality, a little bounce, a little bounce. Now, staying at this slight bounce, rock your body weight a little to the balls of the feet, like you're tipping forward. Then rock to the middle and rock slightly back towards the heels. Rock slightly forward, let the hands float. Rock slightly back, dragging the hands and let them slide behind. So their arms are relaxed, pendulum swinging forward and back. Now, forward, this is pung, rising. The hands slide back in front of the shoulders, settle just an inch or two down, and then G, which is driving forward, shoom right out through your fingertips. Turn your palms to face each other and just drop the arms softly. Then remember this one, rise close to the body. Rise, hands float out with wrists totally relaxed. This is called Lu, gliding, sliding down. And then once more, rising in front, sliding back. Now here, this is called An, as if pressing down, but not with force down and then point the fingers down let your tail sneak out the back and just sink the tail and notice this soft little rounded quality the crown is still buoyant but the back is opening and then we rise back to stand rock a little forward hands float forward rock a little back hands float back pung or rising backs of hands hands float back and settle just a little bit down and then G, forward. Palms turn to face each other and drop down, empty. Then rise, staying very relaxed. Express or unfurl, and then loo. Then like pung again, back, 
Now on, or the trough of a wave, sinking, 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 sinking. Soften through the fingertips and then sneak the tail out and do just that little sink. That little round, it's very subtle, very subtle. And then we rise. Again, slight forward, slight back. Pung. Slides back and settles, G. Soften, rise, out, unfurling, loo, or gliding back, or sliding back. And then again, pung, floats back on, trough of a wave, trough, through, and rise. Two more. Can you execute the movement with hydraulics? The softness, pung to G. Down, through, soft, rise. One more, a little bit forward. A little bit back. You can see with my body how I'm using it sort of in a different way <clears throat> than normal to execute the movements. Sinking through. Now we're back to standing. Shift a little to your left leg. Let your belly button turn a little left. Let your waist turn a little left. Arms swing a little that way. Then shift to the right leg. Turn, let the hands follow. <clears throat> shift to the left leg, turn. The hands naturally sweeping through the water. This is the bear washes paws in the stream. And this becomes a whole sort of bear-like experience, right? So first we're just washing our claws in the water, but then now I'm doing a little low-level bear strike, right? I'm sweeping that hand across like a bear claw. I'm shifting and turning. The arm is following, and it's like a little slash, a little bear slash. Now this hand has to slide through like a brush knee, but this one, slash. And the hands can come up higher, slash, and just continue. Sorry, I uh, have a phone call. <clears throat> slash, slash. Now the bear slash becomes brush knee and push. Now we're here. Elbow is folded, and we're shifting, turning, brush knee, push. Then the right hand comes down, left hand floats up, roll, fold, and it's shift and turn, brush, push. And then it's shift, turn, brush, and push. Shift and turn, brush, push. Shift and turn, brush, push. Shift and turn. Last one, we shift, turn, brush, push. Now we're on the left leg. Right hand floats down, left hand bends at elbow, fingers point up. Empty right foot steps behind and foot turns out 10, 15 degrees. Now, treat your back leg like a spring-loaded chair that you go and rely upon for all your body weight to be supported and connected to the earth. Then, as this other foot is empty, lift the heel. That would be your first option. Second option is... Touch the toe and lift and lower a little bit. Third option is float it. Golden rooster stands on one leg. Then we lower that leg, and the key here is don't put weight into it when it touches the ground. Then change the body weight. Make sure this foot toes are turned out a little. Change the hands. Left hand down, right hand points up. Sit through that back leg. So it's not that I'm standing here and then I go, okay, I've got to pull this leg up. 
It's that I commit more. I commit more to that back leg and I say, okay, I'm trusting you back leg. Then this becomes so unused, it's not necessary. So then I can go, okay, where do I want it? Touch the toe, maybe lift. And the way to practice this one over time is have your hand on a chair off to the side of you so that you can shift and change. Then place your hand on that chair and practice, okay, I'm here, this is here for sturdiness, and then I practice emptying this, right? Over time, we work on a little bit of a, a challenge with this empty leg, but it's got to get empty first. So now we golden rooster and set it down empty. Shift and change, rooster, set it down empty. Then change one more. Set it down empty. Both hands come down. The bear washes paws. Make sure your feet are parallel again. Shifting, turning. Bear slashing. And this is just such a fun thing to practice. When you get the feel for it, it just feels so healthy to the back. It's so satisfying for all the joints. Just this kind of bear slashing. Now, we're going to go to hands play with clouds. So now, bear wash paws in the stream. This left hand floats up like vapor, becomes a cloud. Now I shift and turn cloud and sweep the lake. Vapor and rain. Now the other hand is a cloud. This is in the lake. Shift and turn. Vapor and rain. Shift and turn cloud lake. Vapor rain. Shift, turn, cloud, lake, vapor rain. I want to add one challenge for those of you feeling pretty steady on this change of weight. While you're vapor raining with this empty foot, you can bring it in and back out. Shift and turn. As you vapor rain, that empty foot floats in and out. Make sure you don't spill any of the espresso that's in the cup that's on your head as you do that change. So the whole point is, how empty is that leg? Can it just come in and out without any disturbance to your central channel? You shift and arrange yourself through that other leg. Bring that foot in and out. Now, this is the new one we've been working on. Take your left hand, I'm sorry, right hand behind your back. Bring your left hand under like it's at the bottom of this other move that we've worked on, this, right? Embracing the moon. So left hand is under, under, right? Now the path that it takes, it goes away from your body and then across and up, the palm stays facing up the entire time. It's called flying diagonal. Turn the palm out and treat it like a crane wing. Let it just fall into the lake, sweep the lake as you shift and turn, left hand is at the bottom of that ball again. The hand goes away from the body as you shift and turn, the arm diagonally goes up and through. Turn the palm to face away, sweeps down like a crane wing through the water as you shift and turn. Shift turn, flying diagonal. Palm turns away, sweeps down, flying diagonal. One more. It's one of my favorite moves. It really heals the shoulder as well. It's very healing for the shoulder, especially when done appropriately. Now, bear, wash paws, both hands, put left hand behind back. Right hand is at the bottom of embracing moon. The hand goes away from the body. And again, I say that because a lot of times people do it like a crane wing to get there, but it's away and then follows that sort of saber-like path. Turn the palm away from the body, sweep the hand down. We shift and sweep the leg to the bottom of that embrace moon. So right here, it's important the hands stay low, right? I'm noticing some of you letting the hand come all the way up 
And then it's less of an interesting move when it's already high. So keep it down here so that when it goes away from the body and up, it's got to be tracked by your proprioception, your, your brain to cut through that very unique pathway. Go ahead, back through. Because again, a lot of it is because our brain wants it easier. So it goes, okay, let me first get it here and then I can get it there. I can draw this square, but we're missing out on this spiral quality of diagonality, the diagonal flying movement. Sweep it across, keep it low, and then let's take it away from the body, up and across. The hand sweeps, we come back down, standing bare to the middle. Left hand under, right hand over without any shifting or turning. Just take the hands in opposite directions. The palms stay facing each other the entire time here. This is parting the wild horse's mane. We're going back and forth. Now notice right now we're doing it on two parallel lines that are parallel with the floor. Turn that on a slight diagonal so that now it goes along that <clears throat> two parallel lines, but at a diagonal. So notice your left arm is again doing the flying diagonal movement. The right hand is doing this sort of opposite but complementary movement. Now hold the ball, or actually let's do it one more time. So now the hands go out. Now hold here. Left hand turns palm away. Right hand turns palm up. Left hand sweeps down like a wing. Right hand rises. Then left hand sweeps the leg, right hand folds. And we're back, do it again. Part the wild horse's mane. Turn left palm away, right palm up, simultaneous. Raise and lower. Then sweep left hand across, right hand falls on top. Embrace moon. Now let's make it even harder. Shift to the left, I'm sorry, to the right, Turn to the right so you're loaded up. Now, as you part wild horse mane, shift and turn. Arrive. Turn left palm away, right palm up. As the hands go through this little chain, shift back to the right. And as they create the ball, turn slightly right, loading back up. And we're ready to go again. Part wild horse's mane. Left hand going from low to high, right hand high to low, we've shifted and turned. Now left palm face away, right palm face up, shift and turn, reverse. And again, so this is one of those movements that if I went to a party and said, hey, look, no one's gonna go, wow, right? Because it's not like doing a backflip, but you can feel this is quite demanding at a certain level to shift and turn and do this uh, asymmetrical movement and contain it all within your consciousness. So it's healing. It's very challenging at exactly the place where we need it while aging and when having nervous system and brain body issues. Now, right hand comes down, left hand turns, sweep the lake, sweep it back to the middle, right hand on the bottom, left hand over top. So we start without any of the shifting and we just get this going. We just get our brain able to, uh, to observe and manage opposing movements. Then we turn it on its side and we feel this part wild horse mane, this diagonal, and really let it complete itself all the way to the fingertips. Then we stay here turn right palm away, left palm up, and we get this additional back. And then we part that beautiful wild horse's mane, then flip the hands. And now as we return, shift left, turn left, ready. So you feel this loaded up position, and then we express that shift and turn and unleash. And then right palm away, left palm away, shift and turn. There's this reverse. And then part wild horse mane. 
change hand position and shift reverse. Two more, just notice the state of the brain that is required to maintain and manage all of this. How much room is there for all that distracting thought? Very little. So the more you practice Tai Chi, the more you just find this state where your brain is in that special state where it's very present, and very much inhabiting the body. Now we're gonna take it one step further to finish. We part wild horse main. Then from here, left hand sweeps the leg, right hand falls on top, and we turn just a little extra to like wind up and load up. And then we part wild horse main the other way. Then right hand sweeps the leg, left hand falls on top. We turn just a little more left to wind up and then unleash. Sweep and gather and shift and turn. Eventually we do this while walking, right? So you gotta get comfy with managing it while in place. And then when we add the walking practice, it really just, again, it takes that brain one step further. Last one here. Sweep across, create the ball. Last one across. Sweep right hand, left hand falls on top. And then we close, right hand sweeps out, left hand turn. I'm sorry, I said that backwards, but sweep, sweep. And just do a couple more bare wash paws, just to sort of like you're cleaning the palate. You're just returning to stillness, letting the movement slowly come to still, slowly to still. Turn palms to slightly face forward. They rise. This is our closing gong. As the hands do a nice gathering gesture in front, you tip your body weight into your toes a little. Then as you draw back what you gathered in through the mouth, down to the belly, you settle into your heels a little. Point your fingers, sneak your tail out. Remember this move through. Rise up again. This is called sink chi wash organs. It's like our opening and our closing. Do it again. Into the heels, palms turn forward. As the hands rise and gather, rock to your toes, the ball of your foot. As you gather and bring in, rock to your heels and down to the belly. Point your fingers softly down, tail sneaks out the back, and then we just sink to let everything go through. Feel that spring loadedness to the body as you practice with this move. The turn, one more. Rock back, hands turn forward ish. Nice big round gather gesture. Rock back and drink in. Settle to the belly. Fingers point, sneak the tail out. Mm, soft. And then rise to standing. Final. Shogun or closing gathering gong. And settling right in front of the navel. This is called middle embrace. Here's my belly button here. My hands are at that level, but see they're in front of, they're not on. This is that middle embrace. And then we take one hand over the belly button, other hand over that hand, sealing the practice. If you can, close your eyes. If not, keep them softly, sort of half open. Just take five breaths that are just so leisurely. Nowhere to be, nothing to do. I mean, unless, of course, you have something to do. But you want that feeling of nothing is happening. Stillness. They call it Wu Wei which literally means doing nothing while accomplishing everything. So inwardly doing nothing, yet having energy stored so that you're still doing everything. Wu Wei. Gently open the eyes. Slide one thumb inside the palm of the other. Make a fist around it. Fold the fingers. 
look at your hands, you want this little yin yang shape. This is the Taoist bow. And thank you, everybody. Releasing. Go ahead and have a seat in your chair. Uh, if you have somewhere you need to be, you can just wave, wave and just end uh, or leave meeting. Thank you so much. Um, if there are questions, I'd like to stick around for a bit in chat. So feel free to do that as well. And if you have the time for it, just sitting in your chair and breathing, maybe a cup of tea, especially if you start to get to where you're feeling that shift into that sort of sacred magical state. Um, you know, you want to you want to cultivate being very at home at that in that state. So, well done. Any questions? <laughs>